Um, about a day or two before the deadline for the talks for this conference, uh, I had this idea about uh, web resource integrity and uh, the lack thereof. Um, and so I submitted a talk and then I thought, yes, it will be easy. And uh, conceptually it's easy, but there's of course some a little bit details. Um, anyway, long story short, here I am. Uh, my name is uh, Adam Meyer, Adam Major. Uh, yeah, you can contact me at this email. This is a private email address. I work for SUSE, but this has uh, nothing to do with SUSE as far as I know, at least for now, maybe in the future. Um, so let's start. And I would like to start with a little bit of a history of the, of the web. The history of the web is this. You have a server and you get your HTML and then you could interact with this website. Yeah? It was text. Sometimes it was mostly text. You have a blog. But sometimes you have, a, you have a form. You can fill out contact information. Contact me here and you can do a post and then maybe you get a reply, thank you. And this was great. This was interaction. Uh, later on they added a few things. So you still have your HTML. Maybe there was some CSS also, but there was additional language that was created over the weekend called JavaScript. They called it JavaScript because it's, Java was popular at the time, so why not just borrow the name and uh, do something completely different? And then we can, we can do things with there. There was a uh, prototype stuff like, like uh, string, and then you can add a blink. Yeah, it will blink. It will add a, some kind of labels. You don't have to do them. It will blink for you. So this was useful to blink. And you can still do the post and get the response. Um, yeah. And then we have also additional stuff that happened around, I think it was 2008. 2008, uh, they introduced, okay, there was more leaning on CSS. There's still HTML. But then JavaScript started to do things with the website uh, that was not just doing direct get, they added uh, XML header or HTML requests. They called it Ajax. Yeah, so, so then you have stuff that is updating the website, the part of the website, without refreshing the entire page. So the server was just fetching, let's say, just the right side. You update the stock quotes, etc. But the server is still providing everything, but it's getting a little bit more less refreshing, more interactive. And the model is the same. Yeah, the model is the same, but a little bit better on the JavaScript. The, the, the client is doing more and more. And today, um, yeah, it, it looks a little bit different. So you have your HTML that could be just, I don't know, maybe, maybe 10 lines. There's a header and it says to get some JavaScript. And this JavaScript then pulls more JavaScript and then goes some, some other stuff somewhere else, pulls more JavaScript. And this actually builds an application. And this application is mostly now static. There's no more, oh, put this form in here or something. It's, it becomes data driven. Uh, so you're no longer pulling part of a web page from a server, you're now pulling data. And you're representing the data on the server. So there's now web sockets with, we can do anything, it's just a TCP stream. It just goes back and forth, you can get anything. The, the thing is event driven, but you're talking to many servers and the HTML is no longer maybe coming from the server you control, it's coming from something, something else. There's the, well, let's call it Edge, but it's a CDN mostly. And it's mostly a placeholder. But the publication process of your web page is the same I think mostly since the beginning. You put stuff on somewhere and then forget about it, maybe, maybe not, and people come and people get it and they will trust it that what you put there is what they will get. Yeah? What you put there is what is is what they will receive every single time. So meanwhile, meanwhile on the desktop for example, you you have a desktop and in that span of time, the last 20 years, stuff changed. You no longer pull a binary from the web, execute it, and it just runs. 
Now you have a warning. Hey, it's not signed or uh, are you trusting this from Microsoft? Are you trusting this signed by SUSE? It's like, is, is, this is okay. Um, we have the same thing with our PMs. They're signed from the beginning. You don't just pull it from somewhere and then, well, it's unsigned. Okay, are you trusting to install it? Mm, maybe, but yeah. When we publish our sources, we publish a tarball. Yeah, there's the sources. We put them on the server. But then people will come around, well, hopefully they will come around, and where is the signature? Did you publish your key for that you signed this tarball somewhere? Maybe somewhere else from the tarball? Yeah? So if the, if the, if the tarball is somewhere and the signature is in the same place, maybe the, the, the hash of your, of your GPG key that you signed it is in the sources on GitHub or some, some other place, yes? Some other place. So the question is, uh, can we can we can we sign the web? Yeah, can you sign the internet? And so you can trust what you deploy is actually what people are. What you get? Yeah. So obviously you can you can try to sign things. You can sign your assets that you deploy, you can sign the HTML, you can sign the JavaScript, you can put the signature somewhere, and then where do you put the public key? Do you put it also on some website somewhere? Um, how do you verify that this key is actually authentic, that it was not modified like the rest could be modified, right? So you don't put the key on the website because you, you assume it's a one channel somewhere. But you can put it somewhere else. So I, the idea came up that maybe you can publish your key in the DNS, because DNS is a nice place to put anything, especially f short records. So an elliptic curve key of any size that is supported by the web browser you can put it in a DNS record and not TXT, TXT record. TXT record has 250 characters or something like this. And any NIST curve EC key that is supported by the browser is going to be supported, is going to be fit in this one single record. You can put it there. So this provides you a little bit of a second factor. So combine this with DNSSEC you can start to trust that this key is authentic because DNSSEC you can sign offline and then your key from the DNS is authentic. It's some human, not a machine. You're not trusting the machine, the server. You're trusting that somebody that can handle this key signed it, right? So then you can, you can generate some kind of integrity file um, that for the assets that you're going to be publishing. So whether it's uh, index.html or JavaScript or et cetera, that's everything that is not mutating. So this is not going to work for stuff that is generated. It works for single page websites. It works for static publications. It doesn't work for uh, build.opensusa.org uh, because that stuff is a lot of uh, generated, not. Uh, generated pages. And then when you have a, this, this generated site integrity file, you sign it with the private key and the public part you can put in the, your DNS record. Um, and then you publish this together. Well, by together you publish the integrity first, then you publish the assets so that there's no, uh, you know, um, um, no, there's n nothing is get, uh, you get something and not the other uh, kind of a thing. So w what do I mean by this site integrity JSON file? Um, it's quite simple. You have some uh, object here. Uh, so let's say you get some index HTML, any, all assets here, you can put uh, your hash there. If the asset changes, you can add a hash. So you're not going to have a race condition during publication, right? If somebody is still getting the 
old file because you know you, pub you published the, the integrity file first and the old HTML is still available, they it will still match, it will still be there. Um, the signature you then encode there and you sign this uh, with elect elliptic curve DSA. Yeah. So you have to, you sign this file. Um, the way you sign it is you don't take a file and you sign it. Obviously, you need to extract the content, put it into a predictable kind of a, a file a string, and then you can sign it. So this works. And to verify this, uh, you need a little bit extra. You need to have a browser that supports this. So no browser supports this, obviously. But browsers have this special feature called extensions. Uh, an extension is simply just a, a JavaScript file that runs in the browser. It still runs in a sandbox. It has access to data that comes in from the websites. So for example, your ad block, it filters. It has access to full, full streams of this stuff. And we can use basically the same mechanism for this. Uh, as the data is coming in, you can see that there's a main site being loaded and then you can say, okay, I want the site integrity. Is that available? Um, not available, okay, skip, okay, that's a regular website. Is it available? Yes, it's available. Okay, then you can check the DNS. Um, does it have the key? If it has a key, then okay, maybe this should be like uh, something, something should be signed here or maybe we should check the integrity here. And you can check the signature and then you can check all the assets as they come in uh, with the, do the hashes match. And this is the simple uh, concept, I guess. There's a few caveats in this, of course. The request filter is a, a series of filters. So if you have an extension uh, that is modifying the contents as it's come in, it will obviously modify the hash and uh, it will not match anymore. So if you have ads on your website and then you want to verify after running uh, uh, ad block first, and then you have your extension for, for this verification, it will fail. If it's done the other way around, it, it will succeed, of course. Um, DNS is also not supported in the browsers from the extensions, as far as I know, I couldn't find anything. There was a, there's a DNS, you can do a query for resolve an A record or AAA or something, but that's meaningless. Fortunately, now we have DNS over HTTPS, and there's a very nice library that does this in JavaScript. And you can connect to a DNS over HTTPS server. So uh, there's a bunch of them on available. Uh, most of them are also uh, broken. Um, and I would say broken because they don't provide the, the cross uh, origin uh, headers, which means the browser will block them. Yeah. Cloudflare is the only one that works. So, uh, but you can, of course, like I said, you can run your own D D DNS over HTTPS. This is not for mass deployments for everybody. This is for security conscious people that want to verify applications that they deploy on their own servers to make sure that when they run them, they're not entering something that is, you know, uh, compromised. Um, it's also going to load your websites uh, a smidgen slower because it will do a request for site integrity JSON, which you know takes a few milliseconds to return 404 in most cases, um, and if it doesn't, it downloads, which is could be a few uh, kilobytes of data. Um, and yes, obviously, it is not for generated websites because generated websites have nothing signed. So what, what are the benefits of this approach? Is that when you go to a website, you can be certain that this website is as authentic as whoever deploys it or the mechanism that deployed it uh, uh, said it is. You can't be hacked and not know it because uh, is the assets will not be correct. 
you can't go to, let's say, uh, for example, when we go to our bank's website, uh, we run stuff in our browsers. There's JavaScript that is executed. It is not trusted, obviously, so it's run in a sandbox, but then we enter all our banking information to it and it supposedly goes to the bank. Um, but is it 100% always? Yes, we trust it. We trust the machine instead of the, the, the people that could be, that are deploying it, I guess. So, like I said, this extension is additional. You download it and then it will, it will check if things are signed. If things are unsigned, it of course just passes them through like the normal website. And because it uses DNS, it's automatically uh, web scale because DNS is web scale. Um, I mentioned this approach, uh, uh, just when I mentioned this, uh, I, I, I mentioned this to, to Markus Rucker. So you may know him as, as Derek's. And he immediately replied, oh, I, I, I just read something about this. I just read something about this on Cloudflare. I'm like, huh? Did they come up with the same thing? Um, so I have to do a, 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 a honorable mention. They, they came up with, Facebook actually came up with code verify for, for their WhatsApp. It's a special extension to verify WhatsApp. The way it works is similar to what I explained, except it doesn't use public key cryptography. It's simply they partnered with another uh, very small uh, Cloudflare, so we have two small companies on the internet just doing their own things. They, they, they partner together, so whenever there's a download of WhatsApp assets, uh, it will contact the Cloudflare audit endpoint and check if the hash is match. If the hashes don't match, it will throw up an error and it says like, okay. But the problem is this only works for WhatsApp. If you want to verify anything else, you need to deploy your own service and you need to uh, have a different extension. Yeah. So, uh, because it's not DNS, I say it's not web scale. <laughs> Sorry, Facebook and uh, Cloudflare. Yeah, I know you're big, but yeah, uh, it's it's dependent on another service. So so you have you deploy on one thing, and then you're depending on another service that is running. This is not uh, a passive so environment. So in a in a single single page applications, most of your uh, interaction is with the services that provide data, and in this case. Uh, you have another service that provides data to validate the CSS every time, which is, yeah, um, it should be just static files in this case. So you're not in control so much anymore uh, because you don't control this remote endpoint service or maybe you have to deploy it, etc. So, um, code. There's the code, but what code, yeah? Um, I didn't actually deploy any code yet. Um, <laughs> The signing part works. The checking part works in the console when I type it. I didn't yet make it work uh, in the extension properly. So there is nothing to be actually there, but there will be something there because I need this for my own project and it has nothing to do with uh, anybody else using it or not. But I would very much welcome if any of you is deploying uh, static assets, single page apps, etc., and would like to collaborate or give feedback once it's available, etc., or watch this page when it's available. Uh, well, it, you're laughing, but it actually is. This is this is not something that is in the air. I did the, uh, actually make <laughs> make it work. Um, except not in a user-friendly fashion. So, highlight this, uh, uh, watch this page, and uh, contact me if you're interested, because uh, this is still work in progress, and there are still some things that need to be ironed out, or maybe, maybe uh, uh, corrected, fixed, or improved. 
but this is something I think is well worth it because up till now we're trusting servers, we're not trusting the people that are deploying it and I think we could do better. We could at least do the same thing that we do with tarballs. Okay, thank you. And if you have any questions or feedback, yeah. CSP, I'm... Ah. Yes, the, the con there, there's content integrity for hashes, yes. But it works, but uh, there's no content integrity for, for index.html, yes? Yes, yes. Uh, yes, so, so the question is about if you do only for part of the page, then anything is better than nothing, right? So, so if you are at least signing the assets that you control, um, then it's up to you whether you want to delegate stuff to, to web us to 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 ad agencies right so if you have ads on your on your web page okay that's great but um if you're if you're a a bank for example or you have a, a just your own page with a let's say let's say uh, a good application example would be would be a matrix or matrix application like a, a, a what is it elements elements web this is just static files there's nothing there. This is plain static files. Um, you get the tarball, it's signed. You can check the signature, it's fine. You deploy it by just deploying the tarball. Un un untarable the tarball, yeah? Extract it. And there's your application. It doesn't pull anything extra anywhere. Um, if you, when you have this signed, you can verify every time you go there that you actually get what you get. So this is a way of, of of um, uh, having uh, authenticity in a servers that you not necessarily trust 100%. It's the same thing like with DNSSEC. When you deploy a DNSSEC signed zone, you don't have to trust that the authoritative servers are going to be serving it properly because they have no choice. They either serve something that will be validated or it will be served as bogus or they can, the, the the only thing they could do is shut down because that's the that's the only denial of service against DNS sec. So in this case, it's similar. If you hack our, if you hack, compromise a website that is signed with this, and there's no other things, resources, ads agencies with JavaScripts coming in. Um, the only thing you can do is turn it off. You, you I like the idea. I think especially with marketing accounts, it's very nice because I don't use uh, Mm -hmm. But but in all these cases, is as soon as you compromise the server, you you compromise everything. And in this case, you compromise the server, and then you can just turn it off. So you have uh, you you can't you can't. Uh, the the idea here is that we trust our data 
to these applications. And because we trust our data to these applications, we should, we should be able to trust the applications before we trust them with our data. So that's the only thing I, I, uh, I want to have, is that we, I, I know that, uh, for example, the bank's website, when I get the, every, all the JavaScript, everything, I want to know that it's what they deployed and not because, oh, oh, sorry, we're hacked and uh, yeah, just few hours, but it's just affected few customers, yeah? We've seen this many times with different things that um, um, there were, there were, there were uh, uh, assets that were probably compromised for already deployed, uh, like uh, I think it was some, some Linux distribution that then they had to, it's like, oh, sorry, uh, the server was compromised for a few hours. It was only a few hours before we noticed, but there's always this race. Yeah. So I encourage everybody to contact me or watch this page because yeah, I, I think this has a, lit, uh, a little bit future, especially as we move more, more towards data-driven applications on the web and not, not generated HTML anymore. Okay, thank you for listening and yeah.